Hey, bike farmers, thanks for clicking in. We've got this vintage Trek road bike here and it's set up with six speed sun tour friction down tube shifters. And the customer asked if I could convert it to some bar end shifters. And I said, sure, why not? I've even got some old sun tour bar cons. It'll still be friction, but I kind of like how that feels. And I kind of talked him into it. And then yesterday I stripped down an old Cannondale frame and I ended up with some Shimano bar end shifters that are indexing, so they click. See. Also on that bike were some really cool wheels. That bike had these Mavic MA40s DT Swiss spokes on these specialized hubs that are just buttery, silky smooth and a seven speed freewheel. Really cool wheels and they're 27 inch. That's the big kicker. The customer's a viewer, so I don't know. My brain told me, hey, this is a good idea to reach out to the customer and say, hey, we can make a video. I got these parts. I don't know what else I'm gonna do with them. You know, this 27 inch stuff is kind of hard to find and seven speed bar end index Shimano, pretty cool. All of his other bikes are indexed. He's got old road bikes and they're indexed. He had already picked out some Brooks leather tape. It's actually pleather, it's not real, but it's wonderful stuff. Um, we went with Honey Brown. I think it's gonna look really great when we get done. And then in my bins, I found this old Shimano 600 rear derailleur that I think is gonna look really nice, kind of keep it that vintage feel. What excites me the most is, is I love vintage steel road bikes. This is just classic geometry. Guy's had the bike forever, he doesn't ride it much, but I think with these changes, is, I think he's gonna have himself a very rideable road bike. So yeah, lots going on with this one. This headset is uh, kind of indexed, so we're gonna free pack the bottom of the headset and get that so it's moving smoothly. I'm gonna take this bottom bracket apart and put some new grease in that too. Kick back, relax, and enjoy the build. Per the use, just start with taking these wheels off. I think we'll do some pads on this bike. These old Sun Tour VX rear derailleurs are wonderful pieces of machinery. Just a really great derailleur. Really neat. Some say they're the best ever built, but no indexing and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's just they're so overbuilt. Lots of features, really strong spring. Just a nice, gorgeous piece of machinery. Really like it. Total bike nerd stuff right there. I think I'm gonna pull this out of here too. It'll make it easier to clean the frame. We gotta get, we're gonna end up with all new cables and everything anyway. We can reuse this front derailleur. With the bar end shifters, the left one is, or the front, whatever you want to call it, is friction anyway. So this will work fine. No compatibility issues there. So just keep that on there. It's, it's original and frankly, I think the Sun Tour stuff is prettier than the Shimano stuff. This bike wasn't ridden a lot, primarily because right after he got it, he was gonna upgrade it to index and it got talked into buying a new bike. Probably made a whole lot of sense at the time, but now we can do it, so why not? Another thing of note, metal dust caps.
Got a lot of questions about this tool on a previous video. The hose and lock ring pliers. I got an affiliate link for you. Oh, didn't need it, but it's a great tool. All right, let's see what this thing looks like. Ooh, it is very greased. It didn't need it, could have just adjusted it. But since we're at it this far, might as well clean it up and do the right thing, huh? Yeah, it was all loose anyway. This is good, good plan. Good and greasy. I think I'll put on some gloves to do this one. stuff out of the way here. some of this old grease off. I decided not to dirty up one of my cloth rags just because it's a lot of grease. More than you need, but it doesn't hurt anything. It's a sake bottom bracket. Nice, durable, high quality bottom bracket. Nothing, nothing fancy, nothing cheap. Like the good old days of Trek in the beginning. That was our whole thing. Nothing fancy, nothing cheap. They did have a couple of high-end bikes. I mean, you could go, you know, European racing bike if you wanted. Get some fancy tubes with some Campagnolo. But for the most part, it was just good Japanese quality tubing and Japanese componentry. Japan was really coming on the scene. Sun Tour was too practical. They lost to the technology. They were just, I think, a little bit behind the eight ball. Didn't quite make it. So I made a grease syringe the other day. Still haven't used it. I'd say that works pretty good. Good and greasy. Let's clean the threads up a little bit here. There, that's good and tight. Whew. So with the spindles, you can see there's writing on them. I think you can see that. And you want to be able to read the writing if you're standing over the bike looking down. That's how you know which direction the spindle goes. Forgot to wipe the threads over here. Get a finger in there. Oh, dropped a uh, lock ring.
So sometimes with the lock ring pliers, if you get it just right, you can squeeze super tight and get it to, and that'll grab the cup and you can make micro adjustments on the fly. That's a little trick. You know, because if you're compressing the ring onto the cup, you can crank on it. So, because this had a little bit of a play to it, but I think it's just about perfect. I think it's gonna spin freely once we get things on. Okay, it's good and tight. We're gonna go with that for now. Give it a good flossing while we're in here. These somewhat dirty, clean rags make good tack cloths. It's good for grabbing some grime, getting it out of there. Looks like this chainstay had a chainstay protector on it. Left behind some residue. My weapon of choice is goof off. It's coming right off. Woo, smells good too. Things might get weird if I'm lucky. And this thing is ridiculously clean anyway. Knock some dust off of it, right? What if somebody's looking? Use this other arm to get leverage on it. So my arm's not near a shot. It's all about getting the shot. See how hard I work for you guys? Ooh, that's buttery smooth. Yep, yeah, we're good. Some tour dropouts. Vintage Shimano 600, also known as Altegra rear derailleur. This is just prior to the tri-color stuff. I think that's perfect for this bike. Good color and everything. Yeah. Glad I found that. Max cog of 28 should be perfect. I'm going to cheat a little bit on these brake cables. Turn this frown upside down. Drop some lube down your cable. Grab your brake lever and do some squeezing. And if you wanna get real tricky, you can hit some up front here too. Just kinda of work it in there. Might as well do the front too while I'm at it, huh? Good enough. You get the gist, right? You see what I'm doing. Cheapo Furniture Polish makes wonderful bike polish. If you put it on the list, your wife will buy it for you. 12 cans. So we have to take these shifters off and 
And this bike is before they were putting bosses on them. There is a little stoppy thingy braze down here. That's kind of neat. Get that cleaned up. All right, here's an old Shimano cable stop strap thingy. Whoops. That was not an ope. I didn't really drop it the whole way. Made a quick little modification of this bolt off camera to get it so it stops spinning. Get a good clamp on it. That ain't going nowhere. Dusty, rusty, crusty. Okay, so I'm gonna take my pedal wrench handle, stick it in the fork like that, and hold it down below, and then crank off my lock nut. Set it aside. Take the old reflector off. One spacer. There's another one here. A keyed one. I got, oh, there we go. Top one's still got some grease to it. All right, we're gonna flip that bike over and pack the bottom. Ooh, that cleaned up really well. There are no pits or nothing in there. Clean as a whistle. Did you hear that? It whistled. I think I wanna make the hole in this thing bigger. Squeeze it too hard, it's a little hard to control. And then we just, whoop, dropped a ball bearing. Wonder how many I'm gonna drop. Let's just count them, that's one. Two. Grease is really sticky, but gravity is stronger. All right, I got so much grease in there, I can't see what I'm doing anymore. But, if you take your fork, it in there. I always purposely hit it with the threads on the fork too. Just grease them up. Okay. All right, because now my thread's are already greased. Let me look and I can see where the balls are. And I think there's plenty. Grab one of the ones I dropped. I'm going to put right through there. Oh, dropped a ball bearing. Right there. One shiny one for you. Well, I guess I forgot to hit record, but I just sprayed the crap out of that with this and rubbed it all down. Like that. I made it all clean. Here's the top cup. I just don't want to flip it over and spray it with degreaser and watch all those ball bearings fall out all over the floor. I know that's what you want to see, but I don't want to see it. You can put the fork in, grease the top bearing. Okie dokie. Headset is overhauled. Forgot the reflector. Eh, we can clean that up too, huh? All 
All right, I want to put this up as high as it lets us. Ooh, that feels good. Man, that feels really good. Oh yeah, now everything's good. Beautiful. So this headset was keyed, or I can't remember what they call it, but keyed, I believe is, but anyway, it was stuck in the forward position. Um, and that's because the bearing retainer holds the bearings in one spot. And anyway, if you free pack the bottom like I did, it makes everything silky smooth, better than new. All right, we're gonna get going on these wheels here. They're really pretty straight. I might try to make a couple tweaks here. Yeah, the nipples are still spinning great. Beautiful. These are some really nice wheels. That's all it took. I mean, it was not much. I just put a little bit of grease on the axle over on this side. Now I'm gonna grind it in with a rag. It kinda polishes things up. And I'm just using the goo that's on this rag to polish the hub back here. I'm gonna knock everything off the spokes too. This bike sat for a while, but these hubs feel so nice. I'd be foolish to take them apart. Yeah, this rag has a lot of that um, citrus degreaser on it from doing the headset. So it's polishing these spokes right up. Let's go one at a time. I don't know a faster way to do it. Sometimes I'll just hit them with Dawn Power Wash and then wipe that off. But I've got such a good juicy rag right now that you can spray this stuff. Man, I really want to take the spoke protector. It's got a really nice alloy spoke protector on that old wheel. I think I'm going to do it, put it on this one. I want to get close up of that. Look at how clean that is. Shined right up. Very happy. Yeah, the further I get along on this project, the better the idea seems to me. I'm just gonna do the rag. an old Grateful Dead reference for you. So he's got some 28 millimeter Continental Ultra Sports on here. They look to be just fine. We're gonna keep them. I think some uh, Panaracer Pasalas would help this bike float a little more. Yeah, these are one and an eighth. I think you could even fit one and a quarters on this bike. So 32 millimeter. That's what I'd do when it's time. Go with a little wider tire. What do you say? Should we get that dork disc off there? It's so good. Oh, okay. Public service announcement. I would say it's almost 50%. I mean, it seems like a lot, but these springs are in backward. So, that's wrong. The pointy side goes in, folks. Every single time, the pointy side goes in. When you have the pointy side out, then the springs wrap around the axles. It doesn't fit in the dropouts right. Your wheel goes in crooked. Then you adjust your brakes to a crooked wheel. Blah, 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 blah. And it's all because of this stupid little spring. And they're always on backwards because your brain is telling you that it makes sense, but it doesn't. Pointy side in, pointy side in, pointy side in. You'll never forget.
Oh, that's not the right tool. Uh, how about this one? Nope. How about this one? Nope. How about this one? Nope. How about this one? I'm stumped. I don't have the tool to get this freewheel off. It's an Atom 77 compact freewheel and I don't have the tool for it. So, spoke protector stays. What do you say? Can we put a plastic one on there? I'm gonna leave it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It looks good the way it is. Yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it right now. For all you people that are already writing that comment, you're not clever. I know I'm a hypocrite. I know I've been lecturing you on dork discs and I just decided against it, but I'm Andy Quant and I do what I want. This front one done. They're actually specialized hubs. I came off a Cannondale, vintage Cannondale, but it was kind of a Franken bike. These came off a very nice bicycle. These were high end, amazing wheels early, you know, like in the days of Trek and Specialized, late 70s, early 80s, you know, just because it's 27 inch. I don't know exactly when everything switched over to 700C. It's pretty funny how many people think 700C means 700 centimeters. Think about how big that wheel would be. To be honest with you, I don't even know what 700C means. I know C is the tire width doesn't make any sense because it's a rim size. <sighs> Get this thing looking like a bike again, huh? <sighs> Makes me want to ride it. Yeah, there's definitely room for inch and a quarter tires, and I'd do it on this one. Exciting. I'm gonna try to reuse this original chain. I think it's gonna index just fine, but if it doesn't, we'll swap it out. How's that sound? This can be tricky. Length looks good. Eh, it might be a link too long. Let's make sure everything works before we jump to conclusions. Okay, we'll unwrap these bars. I'm always tempted to just start hacking them off, but I think the easiest way is still just to cut them at the top here and unwrap them. So you start hacking on this way and it just ends up being a mess. You can kind of do this. Actually, these were wrapped the other way, apparently. Notice I didn't say the wrong way. It's not the way I do it. But there's a debate out there on which way is right. There's good arguments on both sides I've, I've heard presented. But I have my preferred method. I don't have a whole lot of reason for it. I 
Okay, the Shimano bar, well, I think all the bar end shifters are reverse thread. So put it in there and lefty tighty. And the hardware is pretty soft, so don't get that wrong. You will destroy them. Ask me how I know. You kind of got to know what's up with these things. Once you get them all put together properly, it's kind of neat because if you flip this guy up, you can put it there and now you got a friction shifter. Okay, you turn it here and you got your SIS indexing. We're gonna leave this at indexing and set it up and then he has the option, you can flip that anytime you want. All the way down, so you're in first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, sixth gear, seventh gear, and then you got a ghost. So technically you could make it an eight speed if you wanted to, but. And that's got some good haptics to it. Pop that one in there. That one's just friction. So it's just high, low. You can put a triple on this bike, no problem. It's not the best angle for you, but we're gonna go lefty tighty. And again, it's kind of risky to use this big wrench like that, but just snug it up. Oh, dropped a shifter. So I get it pointing straight down. Pretty good. Okay, we're gonna get our best guess on housing length here. That looks good and not ridiculous. So once I get one piece cut, I know the other side will be the exact same. Line that up, cut the other side. And then I have sharpened spokes that I use as pokey tools. Open up the innards here. And then put the ferrules on. And I want I want to make sure that these are as seated as possible. These plastic ones tend to seat themselves when you start working them. And then everything just kind of sits in its home there. And this should sit right there. This one there. good. I wonder if they're a little long. I think they're a little long. I'm gonna cut a little bit off. Yeah, I'm gonna cut a little off. Brand new slick cables. This bike is gonna practically ride itself. So this is the same customer with the DIY guy nice try video. That was his Gary Fisher that he did a pretty good job on, except for the things that he kind of missed a little bit, but we sorted it out. And then uh, also the Line and Kugel's charity bike. But he had one other track I didn't do a video on because I was a little unsure of how it was gonna turn out. And it turned out pretty good, but when he picked them all up, he dropped this off and then we talked about fun things we can do with it. And he also mentioned that his wife is reading my wife's book. And there's a link in the description to that. It's an award-winning novel. All the librarians here in Wisconsin voted it the literary fiction book of the year this year. It'll be one of the best books you read, I promise. It's a very good book. It's called Still True by Maggie Ginsberg. Nice story of living in a small town. People always ask, what's it about? And it's just, you know, it's just a good literary fiction now. It's about life, how we live, and treat one another and secrets and deception and why and that kind of stuff. So if you're into fiction, into reading, go get Still True. Use the affiliate link so I get a cut. <laughs> anyway, a lot of you watch my other videos where I'm ranting and raving about how annoying customers are. And You know, John gets it. He brings me this stuff in the middle of winter when I got nothing better to do. I don't like doing these projects 
in the middle of bike season because they take forever and they're complicated and you never know how they're gonna turn out and blah, 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 blah. You know, and that's when I'm making money. I just wanna tune up hybrids, get people rolling. So think about that if you're uh, in a seasonal place. Just because you have a weird bike project doesn't necessarily mean you're doing the bike shop a favor by bringing it to them in the middle of the season. The normal stuff, you know, your day-to-day, -day, that stuff, all the time, baby. I tune up bikes in my sleep. This brake cable here is giving me the fits. Man, I'm about to just put a new cable on here. Oh, oh, I just frayed it. Damn it. All right, we're getting a new cable. So dumb. So this, what I'm going through right now, and like can't get that out, blah, blah, blah. This is why these projects are best for the off season because this kind of stuff happens. I knew it as soon as I took the cable out of this front brake earlier, I knew I'd live to regret it. You know, fishing this crusty old cable out of this lever. Come on, there we go. See how it's all bent and kinked and there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I thought I had it. Nope. There we go. I'm using the camera mic now. Sorry if it's Sounds a little funny. I don't know when I lost audio. I think I can edit a lot of that out, so you probably just missed a whole lot of stuff. Did you hear the part about going to the description and finding the affiliate link to buy my wife's book? Okay, so I got the front derailleur hooked up here, and now I'm gonna flex the cable. And of course, there's a lot of slack now. Those ferrules that we put on the housing probably just seated themselves. Make sure your lever's all the way down. This is good and tight that anchor now. The limits should be set. I actually bought one of these uh, cable tip crimper tools. I gotta learn how to use it. But you can just put the cable tip in it and then put it on there and squeeze. Get pretty close to the moment of truth. Seeing how this, this thing indexes. Alright, we're gonna do the same thing. We just flex that cable. Stretch it out. Okay, here we go. Okay, the chain is too long. Okay, so that chain or the cable was a little loose. I'm gonna tighten it. Get that to stop rubbing. Uh, we should just take a link out of that chain. Turn the barrel adjuster in a little. Grab the cable. We're gonna manually tighten it. Okay, I'm pulling as hard as I can with my right hand and trying to operate a tool with my left. Okay, so it's struggling to go up. I think a new chain would really improve that. This kind of gives you the best of both worlds, so you get that real clunky sun tour feel as it's not shifting down now. I like how it engages. I mean, it's doing it. Just a little sluggish going up. Added a little tension. Alright, should we try a new chain? I gotta take a link out anyway. Try a different chain. 
I made a new chain and free wheel. Doing it. Going new chain and free wheel. Free wheels are so cheap. I've got a bunch of them. Plenty of grease on those threads. Wake it up, it's been sitting in the box. KMC chain and a Shimano freewheel. Looks like we're gonna remove one link. Yeah. and silver ones and then I just randomly grab them just to think but I get more excited about the black ones you see so many silver ones I guess that's one drawback these anodized rims aren't the best braking surface but that's okay brakes only slow you down Okay, hey, we're gonna try to tighten this brake from this cable here. Not always easy. Yeah, got it through. Excellent. Let's do the pads in the front too. Huh? Sorry about the audio. Hope we're getting all this. Man, that's good. I think 
guess what? You guessed it. Black tip. Really good. Really good. So normally, I really don't like to tape them until after the test ride, but it snowed like four inches last night. I'm just gonna start wrapping. We've got this fancy Brooks tape. You wanted leather, but I've used this stuff and leather, and I like this stuff better. Microfiber, they call it. Whatever that means. I'm opening myself up to ridicule here. This is how I've always done it. I start it by wrapping one wrap around itself. This is the problem with wrapping uh, far end shifters when you have the cables routed like this. I've routed the cables all the way up the handlebars on some of my bikes, and I like that, but I was afraid with this bike, it's a really big bike, that might be too long, and I need to then use tandem cables, and that gets expensive, and it's kind of silly. This, this preserves, it's, we have these brake the brake housing up here, and it's just got that classic feel. So we can keep that classic look and feel to this bike. Figure eight situation up here by this hood. Looking like maybe I'd get up getting away with this. A little unorthodox, but I think that looks pretty good. If I can do that. Vintage Trek water bottle. How about that? Beautiful. Let's give this build two thumbs up. I love how it turned out. Can't wait to show the customer.
I think John's gonna be thrilled with the way this turned out. I'm really happy with it. I've never seen anything shift so well in my entire life. This is so much better than it was, so much more rideable. This was John's first real bike, and in the late 80s, when indexing came out, he wanted it put on this bike, and the shop said, no, it's easier if you just buy one that's already got it installed. And they were right, because this is a lot of work. It would have been expensive back then. Uh, it's not as expensive now, so, I mean, comparatively. So now he's got it, you know? I mean, here we are 40 years later, and it's happening. Maybe not. 35 years later? Still, long time later, and he finally gets what he wants. It's beautiful. I love these old treks. You know, this is local heritage to me, and I'm just really thrilled the way this turned out. Thank you so much for watching this far. I assume if you watch this far that you enjoy this content. If you want to see more, you got to support the channel. You can click all of the buttons. You can become a member. You can send a super thanks. All of these things help. But remember, the most important thing is to click that notification bell so you and your bike can stay tuned.